Yesterday, we got the announcement that Dragon Ball Super, the movie in 2018, will be coming out December 14th. However, we got even more information as well as some notes from Akira Toriyama as well as the staff list and a couple other things. So this video is going to have a lot of new information regarding the movie and we're also going to talk about the art specifically for what we may actually see in the Dragon Ball movie 2018. First, let's talk about the art. Now, I know you guys may have noticed that the art for this image, if this is what the character model is going to follow, looks drastically different than what we are used to for Dragon Ball Super. And that's because Yamamuro, the chief animation supervisor for Dragon Ball Super, will not be supervising or directing. In fact, he's not even on the staff list for the Dragon Ball 2018 movie. Yamamuro is the one who developed the character model for Dragon Ball Super. These strange looking noses and extra cheek shading. A lot of fans really do not like this. It's very flat. It's almost rubbery looking. I personally am not fond of it whatsoever. And this is the reason that a lot of fans think that Super doesn't look like Z. It's not really that the, the artists and the animators are very different. It's just because they have to follow this character sheet. And that's why when artists like Naotoshi Shida or Yuya Takahashi come in, it blows the minds of all of the fans because it's something completely different than the Yamamuro style, which fans really don't like that much. Now, this is probably a topic for another video altogether, but just to graze it, in Dragon Ball Z, Yamamuro was fantastic. He did some unbelievable animations and art throughout Dragon Ball Z, which is probably the reason that he was promoted to chief animation supervisor for Dragon Ball Super. However, with his character models for Super, we lost that nostalgic feeling that everybody loved from Z, especially near the end in the Boo arc. And because of these character sheets, that was mainly the cause for why fans really don't like the art in Super that much. At least in the beginning, it has definitely improved quite a bit, especially here in the Tournament of Power. We've seen massive upgrades come out through the art. Okay, so let's continue and talk about the art for the movie. Now, this little piece of animation was actually from Yuki Hayashi, and it's from the Nippon Ijin Taisho 2007 special, which is basically a Tenkaichi tournament for all of these great fighters throughout Japanese history and Goku commentates. Now, Hayashi primarily works on One Piece, and the interesting thing here is that we're actually getting a lot of One Piece animators coming in for this 2018 movie. And if they're following that character sheet that we looked at before, it's very possible that we're going to get this very loose and fluid animation style coming into the movie. It's probably not going to look like Takahashi or anything like that, but this is actually a really good thing from an animator's perspective. Because it's very minimalist, you can do way more with the actual physical animation and the frames, the fluidity, the battling, the combat. Everything is going to look way, way better because you can do so many more frames. You can stretch the character. You can do lots of smears. And although it doesn't look like Takahashi's style of art, I mean, what is more important to you? Is it the art or is it the animation? Me specifically, I mean, I like a, a good combination of both, but it's kind of hard to have both because the more detailed a character is, the harder it is to animate because you have to redo all of that level of detail for every single frame, which is incredibly taxing on the staff. This gives the artist way more freedom, and I think it's going to be really nice. I think we're going to get to see something very unique and different from what we've seen out of Dragon Ball Super completely for this movie. So I don't know how fans are going to re react to it. I know the majority of fans are going to love it, probably no matter what. But there's are, there are going to be fans who are going to say, well, the animation sucks. It's not the animation that sucks, guys. It's just that the art is different. It's going to be different than something you're traditionally used to. It's probably going to have more of that one piece feel. Very stretchy characters, lots of fluid movements. And I think it might be exciting. I mean, I'm really hyped up for it. And Toei has said that they want this to be the best looking Dragon Ball film to date. So I would expect crazy, crazy amounts of frames coming out of the battle sequences and even just the emotional moments out of the characters, the subtle movements that come out of them are probably going to be way more fluid and feel more lifelike. And I think that's pretty exciting. 
as I stated before, here is the key staff list, and with the exception of Akira doing the script, the rest of the staff has worked on One Piece in the past, uh, primarily One Piece Film Z, if you're familiar with that movie. So again, guys, expect a kind of like One Piece looking feel coming out of this movie, something very different from traditional Dragon Ball than we've originally seen. Now, the animation director, Nahiro Shintani, is relatively new and fresh coming into this series specifically. Specifically, he doesn't have, I don't believe he has as much experience as some of the other directors and supervisors we've had in the past. So essentially, this is his big shot to really make an impact. And I'm wondering if he succeeds at this movie and fans go crazy for the animation style, is he going to be brought on as a permanent member for the Dragon Ball, the next series, if we get one in 2019? This is his big shot and we'll see how he performs. Good luck to him. Now, Akira Toriyama also released a statement yesterday talking about the movie, and I'm going to get into that in a minute, but because it's something that Akira said, a lot of people think that this is going to be a Dragon Ball Super movie specifically, but according to Ken Zyro, it's actually a provisional title for the title of the movie being called Dragon Ball Super, which it means it has the possibility to change, so it is not confirmed to be specifically a Dragon Ball Super movie. It could be like if they decide they want to do a new series, Dragon Ball Ultra or something like that, they could potentially change it in the future. So let's read these comments from Akira regarding the movie. And there's a lot to talk about here. So let's go through the Dragon Ball Super movie. This time around will be the next story that takes place after the anime that is currently on TV. So this is specifically telling us that this this movie is going to come after the Tournament of Power, which is pretty interesting. It's good to know. It's not like it didn't happen during that time gap between the provisional Omni King tournament and the real tournament of power when Goku was assembling everybody. This is going to happen after Dragon Ball Super. The content will shed a little light on previously unexplored topics having to do with Frieza and the Saiyans. Okay, so that's really interesting. So I've talked about before that there's a possibility that this could be a tribute movie and it could just talk about, you know, how Goku, uh, his entire story from growing up to today and all of his battles and all of his enemies that he turned into friends and stuff like that. And I'm kind of getting that vibe here that it is the tribute movie, at least. It's going to have some tribute elements to it. But if you read the very next sentence, it sa he says, I think it will be a very enjoyable story that serves up to a long-awaited, formidable opponent. So it's going to be like maybe half tribute and then maybe half leading into some great battle with some super powerful enemy who is long awaited. The only people that I can think of is the great priest Beerus, but he's already fought Beerus. I hope it's not Frieza again. That would be so absurd, but I don't think it's going to be Frieza or Beerus because it says long awaited. So it sounds like it's someone that Goku hasn't fought before. Honestly, guys, I think it's going to be Whis. I think that that's my own personal opinion. Don't write that down anywhere. To, but who is somebody that everybody has wanted to see fight for the longest time? And Goku's never got really got the chance to go all out within like a real battle with them. It's it was it's Whis in my opinion. The only other person I can think of is the villain that uh, that Jiren talked about, the evil doer that killed his entire family. And maybe Goku teams up with Jiren in order to fight that evildoer. That is also a huge possibility. So if I was going to say one of the two, it's it's probably either Whis or the Evil Doer, but the Evil Doer isn't really long awaited. The only person that's been a long awaited opponent that everybody's wanted to see for years now since Dragon Ball Super started is Whis. And that's really the only opponent that I can think of. It says he's formidable, it doesn't say he's evil. And now that Goku has mastered Ultra Instinct, which a lot of people believe is the strength of the angels. Maybe we'll get to see Goku battle Whis. I think that would be really damn amazing. I think Goku would get stomped by Whis still. I still don't think that he's as strong as Whis, but I think he's getting closer. I, I do believe he's stronger than Beerus at this point. I, d I don't know if we'll ever get confirmation on that, but let's continue. With 2013's Battle of Gods, the previous installment, Resurrection F, and now this time too, I've been the one writing the stories. I've also been drawing quite a few things for them, like design illustrations. I'm as busy as ever, and if I wasn't serializing anything, I'd have time to think about the anime with which I used to not have enough time to be involved in. So on that note, I'm 
I very much hope you look forward to it. By the way, I think the highly popular Dragon Ball Super manga drawn by Toyotaro is going to see some developments different from the TV, anime, or movies, so please look forward to that and check it out too. So that's pretty much, it's not necessarily confirmation, he said, I think, but you can expect that the manga is kind of going to continue its own story like it has been doing in the sense that they change so many various elements, things that happen. I mean, Vegeta could get Ultra Instinct in the manga. So be on the lookout for that. That's pretty interesting stuff. I mean, Ultra Instinct in general could even change in the manga. As we saw, there is perfected Super Saiyan Blue in the manga. There's a lot of different developments. It's its own continuity. So pretty much Toyotaro is free to do what he wants as long as Akira approves in the end. So a lot of interesting developments coming out for this movie. A lot of exciting things. I do think that Goku is going to be battling Whis. That's my own personal opinion until we get more information on that. I still don't think Goku can win, though. Uh, maybe Goku and Vegeta, if they teamed up together and Vegeta also had Ultra Instinct and it was like a two versus one, that would be pretty cool. But if you think about it, it also does make sense that, you know, if half this movie is kind of like a flashback, like a tribute movie, they're not really going to have that much time to build up to some new super powerful evil enemy. So what they could do is go up against someone like Whis, who already has an established story. So that's what I got for the Dragon Ball movie, guys. Let me know your comments below. Do you like the animation style? Do, would you like to see Goku go up against Whis? Leave your comments, and we'll be, I'll be letting you guys know as soon as we get any more information and details about this movie. All right, fellas, have a good one. Peace. Hiya!